I wear pants on a golf course and I'm not a pro, so I must be an asshole. It's getting a little weird already. <laughs> I don't even really know how they want me to hold this mic. But I'm sure it's and not 420. Say the most I like stoner cop. You know, Stalin had something to say. Why about are we this. always okay? You want to see 100,000 photos of my grandpa? <laughs> Pancake days. Yeah, it's oh, real wait. life shit. Bunch of old soft dads. Dark. There's layers of secrecy, <laughs> and then they crash my drone into a tree. For the first time, we are doing this in a place other than a meeting room and other than Riverside. Would you, would you call this a love seat or not yet? <laughs> It's getting a little weird already. I don't even know if I want to do the podcast anymore. I'm going to be honest. I'm done. But we're on a couch. <laughs> we are on a couch. Which is it's better very than relaxing. being in a chair. Not as good as being on a boat. I'm going to be honest. I, think. I don't even really know how they want me to hold this mic. Is there a way? Where am I supposed to be looking? Do I look right? You can look there. I'm going to look here. Or we can look at each other. <laughs> I knew it was going to be weird if we did it that way. Maybe we just look at the camera. Maybe we just look at the camera. No, uh, no, I, this I'm going to look at your feet because you're wearing Husker socks. It is game, game day. day. Yes. yes. And Vans. I'm also wearing Vans. The co- you see, that's right. And we're both wearing dark colored pants and a black shirt. Do you ever look around this office and you're like, holy crap. We started off because I was down there getting coffee and I saw the first photo ever taken. And we're about to hit. I'm going to touch on this. We're about to hit a billion photos this week so you ever take a step back and like look at this damn mural and look at this office and see the people and like i know it's it's easy to because you kind of get in the mode you're like we're going we're going we're going we're going but like this week especially think about that a billion photos like how much have you taken a step back and like holy shit that is crazy (laughs) i it's funny because it it, there's times especially if i bring people in here you know or if People are, oh, oh, meet you at the office, or we want to go see your office, that kind of stuff. That's yep. when I'm like, you're showing people around. They're like, oh, whoa, cool, you know? Mm-hmm. And you kind of like, oh, yeah, it is really cool. Yeah. It's like versus yeah. it's a hallway <laughs> <laughs> where I just walk to go to the bathroom, you know? That's what it is. This like is a cool a cubicle day. you have here. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, yeah, we, I thought, look, if we can get, a hundred companies to use this Mm -hmm. we can make ten thousand bucks a month Mm -hmm. and that is a business yep like that is is, that is uh we're surviving you know like we can pay for me and chad and that was back pre uh inflation or whatever recent inflation recent but you know so no then but i was saying things like hey we're gonna have a billion photos i remember specifically And they were like all rolling their eyes like, you know, whatever, shut up. (laughs) I'm like, no, we're going to have, there's going to be a billion photos in this thing. And that's just crazy. The fact that there are though is it is nuts. Like I can't believe it. No, we were trying to compute out what a billion photos means. What's even more amazing is the fact that we can technologically handle a billion photos. Because if you think back to like 20 years ago. (laughs) <laughs> like a billion fo- we were trying to put in perspective like if you had a billion polaroids and stack those things up how tall would it be do you know did you figure it out it was something about we could stack photos and we go around the world two and a half times or so i don't know well i want to know how close to the moon we would be luke i don't know i'm not polaroids. an astronaut i don't understand how to compute i like that. i like space <laughs> Shooting this at so ten nineteen a.m. Uh, sure, it's and not four twenty. I like stoner space. comments. I like space. I like lamp. I love lamp. I like space. <laughs> no, I do. I watch. I nerd out on these like uh, space videos. You know, like there's always the what's going on over at SpaceX. They're uh-huh. launching rockets. They're uh-huh. rebuilding their launch pad. Uh-huh. They're hot staging the second stage. What does that mean? Let me tell you. It means that they light the second stage before they even separate okay so that's that why they can hot. push it away it's uh-huh. that's exactly because the fire is hot this, i got it this is this Man, much we know I, yeah uh um, and pat- then there's like the size of the universe videos you know mm-hmm. which is like go ahead and pass hey, it if before you, you continue. zoom out you're like oh uh so anyway uh-huh. i'm into that and so okay here's a while we're on the high ideas uh i was thinking back like I like to think back, let's say like 200 years ago, Mm -hmm. something that's like far enough, maybe, maybe 500 years ago where it's like, Hey, these are people we can basically relate to, right? They're essentially exactly like us, Mm -hmm. except 500 years earlier. And that like, they had no conceivable way. 
like they could not possibly articulate how big the universe is even trying like yep. even using like oh from like that star and then like a billion times further you know what i mean like mm -hmm. ev they couldn't even if they were trying to like absurdly overestimate the size mm -hmm. of the universe mm -hmm. they literally had no Abil like no frame to like I can't remotely I can't do it right now it blow like it, it hurts my head to think how tiny we are no it's it's like crazy that. and it's like I you can't actually what am I like sort of carry in your mind that mm -hmm. that like the size of everything you know like mm -hmm. it, you can't really do it um but these these whole like if you stacked up x it would go to the yeah. moon or whatever and then yep. it's like well how how much further is it to Mars? I don't know. This is the stuff I like. No, it's what I think about that's cool about a billion photos, though, is I just think about the talk that I had with a couple folks where it was like, yeah, that one, though, that one photo, these were all important, but that one saved all. Oh, yeah, yeah, ass. yeah. And it was always like, how many did you take that day? I don't know, 50. But <clears throat> that one that showed that side on that date and that deal, it's kind of like the $75,000 savings I told you about the guy in Chicago. Like, that wasn't us. That was somebody who put in a satellite dish with four-inch, like, sheet Black metal screws, screws yeah. and went right through and caused a flood in this condo. If I didn't – and he even said, I have told my guys to take photos when they're up here, and I don't know why they did such a damn good job that day, but they were like, you know what? We're done. Let's take another round up here, and that's what ended up saving them 75000 So, for me – kind of like the same way of thinking how tiny we are in a galaxy it's like of those billion you could randomly pick one and like that one was super important because it made its way to a customer and it finished a project and they had been dreaming about that project for 30 years of their life my aunt was that way she'd been dreaming and working her tail off about having this one house and i'll never forget she got an email with a photo in it that showed like what her kitchen was gonna look like she had been dreaming about that since she was a kid that one photo is so massively important to a lifetime which people don't not to get mushy think, on it but you know stalin had something to say why about do we this. always come back to like uh, russian dictators i feel well, like that's an obsession I'm, of yours i love the movie the death of stalin not big fan of the guy himself <clears> same you know? but the his death i liked uh-huh but he said one murder is a tragedy a thousand or maybe it was a million is mm -hmm. a statistic mm. and it's seriously effed up line yeah. way of thinking of someone uh -huh. like Stalin. But you go to these photos, it's like people at the airport, mm -hmm. just places where there's like, there's tons of, of whether it be people, tons of photos, murder sense, my earlier analogy. <laughs> but the idea that like, we just when, that you, out. when, when it's the one that you need, like, yes, the photo that you need or the person that you see that you know all of a sudden like mm -hmm. the crowd like there there's just a story every person's got a story you know every car on the road they're going there's 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 like there's a history there's a story they people they know family friends life interest and every now and then it intersects with yours and that but it's easy to lose it in just a number a billion oh. right yep versus that's what i mean all of the interesting oh. yeah the moments the 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 in a sense buried in these photos you know like mm -hmm. what are the stories behind a lot of these and that's actually that hey if we do another tv show mm -hmm. like the story of some company cam photos that's actually interesting there's something there the idea that like there are stories in people's company cam well and we talk about all the time about the photos being helpful for a crew being helpful for a company et cetera, et cetera. And I think maybe we don't spend as much time, even though it's there, you know, we do with, you know, photo reports and stuff that goes to a customer, but we don't maybe spend as much time as the effect that a company cam photo can have on the client when they mm. get it. Seeing their project take shape. Yes, we know that. We say that a lot. But seeing a project that maybe means a lot, like this was my dad's sitting room and we watched football games in here and he passed away 10 years ago and we never finished this one side. Boom. That makes its way to a customer. That's massive. Hmm. huge stuff like that to me is just if you i don't know it's because i'm getting old and when yeah, you get old you start thinking about mortality yeah, yeah you start thinking about mortality and then all of a sudden things yeah but that's when when we were discussing the idea of like how do you put into perspective a billion photos 
And I think we lose it because, again, when I was a kid, I remember getting like a one gig hard drive was mm. like me affording a Ferrari. Oh, it's yeah. like, oh, my God, how like those are only in supercomputers. And now you can get them on like a thumb drive. You know what I mean? It's and crazy. so I think with the technological advance, we do lose some of the sentimental. Like you said, every well, photo means something. Norm MacDonald has a joke about this where he talks about how, you know, every guy hundred years ago or something had like one photo of himself. You had to stand there for like three hours, you know, this grimace like, because he's like, I don't want to do this. My wife's making me do this, you know, you know, so he's like, Hey, well, you know, it's like, you see a photo, you can see the photo of your grandpa, right. you know, whereas like our grandkids are going to be like, Hey, you want to see a hundred thousand photos of my grandpa? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yes. No, I don't. Do actually. you have a photo of your grandfather? We have one. It's in this desk drawer. It's over here. And yeah. then yeah, us, it's like, no, but you're right. Getting, okay. Getting older, mm -hmm. you have kids, mm -hmm. you're thinking about, I mean, your thinking does just sort of change. And there is this kind of like. I don't know, nostalgia, tradition, yep. this stuff like becomes more important. Cause I'm not gonna lie. I, I couldn't have cared less about like tradition. I'm still not a very tradition oriented person. Just I like, know oh, that's the way that it was. That's I, the way that it should be. I know but I find myself like, I don't know, soft and just kind of yep. being like, okay, yep. I am appreciating this a little more of the kind of the pageantry, the stuff that like, you're kind of like, why are we doing this? And then mm -hmm. I don't know, like, you the older you get the more you're like oh it's sort of just like about the time it's mm -hmm. just like about the time that we spend together like that we we have this event or this thing or this commemorate all these random you know what I, I was thinking of these all these little towns they have this like for example the town my dad's from pancake days yeah pancake days yeah there's a fair yep they make like a billion pancakes I in the morning this. you show up you know and it's just like I love this. it's this thing everyone yep. in the town goes the entire town is there in this kind of like community and like the more we're i don't know it's without saying all this trite dumb nonsense but like we are a little more sort of like splintered you know like it's mm -hmm. easier to just kind of like be at your house you can have a digital community mm -hmm. of which i'm a big fan like the idea you can find people that share your interests of whereas before you know you're from holdridge nebraska mm -hmm. you might be like the only person into like chess or skydiving or whatever sure. thing you know yep. some video game some band or whatever yep. but like the idea that oh you can now you can meet people online but at the same time like it's so easy to do this versus seeing what's out there, the people around you. And yep. anyway, I've lost the plot. No, I think that's a good point. I'm glad we got sentimental a little bit. You know, it's not all fun and games here on the podcast. It's about real life shit. <laughs> Cute cut to us just bawling our eyes out. <laughs> if we were better actors. Just bunch of old soft dads is what we're watching here. Um, I asked you this last time, and mm. I don't. I don't think we ever got to it. But um, when you look at so two parter one, what about you working in roofing shaped the way you do company cam? I mm. don't mean that it was your first job. I mean that it actually was in the contracting space. And let's eliminate that it created the idea for company cam because you had a hard time organizing. Yeah, the photos. yeah. But yeah. like, I mean, just to me, like being. A child of an entrepreneur is an interesting thing because I was, you were. Yeah. I, I think it's an interesting perspective to see it while you're going through childhood and then you work there. Well, most people get to be an employee, right? Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Like, and that's usually, and a lot of times your parents are employees. Yeah. Like, and, and it's kind of like you, you kind of have the employee perspective, mm -hmm. let's say. And so like, I kind of, I had the employee, I was an employee, I was working with other employees, but then mm -hmm. my dad was the owner the boss. Like, so I, that like kind of seeing it from mm -hmm. the sides and like kind of knowing what, I don't know. It's just, we're all like biased towards our, you know, we invent these post facto justifications for whatever we're feeling usually at any given moment. And yep. it's like when I hear someone complain about their landlord, I'm like, okay, I don't know, maybe your landlord's bad, but <laughs> every renter like doesn't like their landlord and <laughs> right. every landlord thinks their renters are bums. And like, I don't, just because you have this opinion, it's, you know, yeah. you're, my default assumption is like, 
you're probably biased. Right. Now you could tell me a specific story and I might be like, oh, that's right. horrifying. But <laughs> the, like that, I, so that perspective and then seeing, I don't know, just sort of what it takes. There's an amount of like consistency mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. way that you treat people. And then also just seeing that it is a long game. It's really yep. easy. We're in tech, you know, yep. you're thinking like, oh, fast growth, hacking, you know, mm-hmm. like, but it's just, and I thought a lot of that stuff, even, you know, cause it, cause it matters to move fast. It matters. Like you, oh, yeah. You've got to like try to, you want to try to get kind of an edge and a lot of stuff, but the, the fact that it is a long game and that when you play the game, right. When you treat people right, when you treat your customers, right. It just actually works over time yep. and your life is a lot easier that way. Yep. You know, like you see there's people that like run and hustle and like, there's always a scammy way to make the next buck, you mm-hmm. know, like, the, you know, you can always kind of like get a little bit over and it like in at any given moment, you're like, yeah, I could probably do this, get away with it. But it just, you see it weigh people down and slow them down and they're always dealing with all the stuff. And you're like, Oh, you know, it's not that you have no problems <clears throat> when you do things the right way, but you have a lot fewer problems. <clears throat> And I a lot would, more people on your team that are like rooting for you. I always find it fascinating too. It's like as you grow up, and maybe this is part of getting older, but it's almost like it's part of the way, same way you and I probably go. You know, my parents used to say this, and I thought they were full of crap. And then I get older, and I realize they were right. But it is funny in business how there's always a newfangled way to do something. It's like back in the 80s, they did it this way, but that's not how you manage a company. And it's funny, like you'll get to be 50, 55, 60. You've worked in four different companies. You've been on all different levels of startups to, you know, organizations yeah. like no that that original way was pretty good like that was i mean we kind of danced around the issue and we kind of thought we knew better but like just you know having great customer service and treating people like human beings and you know doing quality work and like that that, that stuff works you know that's that's really good it, it does and it's not maybe there, there's there are other things that work yeah that or that you can make work but like that plan is pretty rock solid and especially just like for the quality of your life like we just have we just hired five people Mm -hmm. six five six five or six yeah uh, approximately and i had a meeting with him yesterday and was talking about how like you know i really like this place i like working here i want to like working here yeah i want you to like working here Mm -hmm. and i want this to be something that it doesn't have to be your whole life, but it matters. And it's a place that you can make meaningful relationships with real people. And like it, it and it can add to your life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and yeah. the, cause we spend a lot of time doing this and yep. the, 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 that's whole getting like these terrible, the journey is the destination, <laughs> you know, but there's just so much, the whale I don't comes know, out of the truth water. to that. Like you want to get there. But anymore, I think of that. There's that movie Chariots of Fire. Have you seen Chariots of Fire? I have. It's a very famous movie. Um, But the premise is like this guy is trying to become, he's trying to win a race, become the fastest. Is it a sprinter? I can't remember how long the race is. And then he finally wins and he realizes like, oh, now he has like no purpose. You know, it's kind of just like, oh, I got to where I thought everything was going to be. And I think, I don't know, there's something about kids. There's something about doing things for a while having some success that you're like oh it's really not different like it's actually just every day is happening right now yep and that is your life and like your circumstances changing in the future you know like it's just not like gonna change that much and you might as well try to enjoy what you're doing when you're doing it. So I, I don't, I lost the thread for roofing. I'd say it's better about this than roofing houses. <laughs> roofing houses sucks. <laughs> like I, I, cause I'm going out tomorrow and I'm doing some work. I don't know what we're doing. Do you know what I'm doing? I don't know what you're doing. You don't know either. I don't know. They're either. keeping you in the dark. I'm in the dark. There's layers of secrecy. <laughs> layers. Don't tell it's, John because he's recording. He's recording the podcast. And he's going to tell it him. The deep cam. I, oh. The deep the, the deep cam deep won't state? tell me. The yeah, like state. the deep state. <laughs> they won't tell me what's going on here. What the media wants you to believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but so I'm going out tomorrow. <clears throat> Tolan and I. Gosh, it's going to be fun. I, uh, I just want to see the raw footage. We're. we're See, I think we're landscaping. Mickey said something a few weeks ago about a Mm -hmm. landscaping business or something. But 
we're gonna go out and work. That's the point. And people, everyone's saying to me, "Oh man, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun." I'm like, "Yeah, I think it is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot more work." You know what I do? I sit on a couch and talk to John, and then I go and sit in chairs and talk to other yeah, people. That's great. what I actually do all day. Right. And then if I get free time, I get to draw app screens on my computer, which it's, is my idea of a good time. It, you know. And now I'm gonna be digging holes in the ground, and probably worse. That's just like what I imagine. I'm gonna be doing that all day. <laughs> And it's going to actually suck. Like it's not, I told my it's old, actually hard work. I told my boss the other day who keep in mind, I was the same guy who said, you're a hell of a number two. We, I sent yeah. him a video and I said, look, he goes, bro, I remember that conversation. And here's a guy who like ran massive departments for direct TV. Yahoo did like, he did the contract negotiation for Adrian Wojnarowski. Like, okay. He's yeah. like done all these huge things. And so, He's wanting to hear yesterday. He's wanting to hear about what I'm doing here. And I go, well, yeah, I do this, this, this. But you know what? I got really into like color grading and DaVinci Resolve yesterday with video editing. And it was wild. Like Devin was telling me this and he's like, wait, you're doing what? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but again, so when you say I'm drawing app screens and it's a good time, it's like, I got lost in audio and video color grading Ooh. yesterday. And I was like, this is great. This is outstanding. It's really fun to find some new <clears throat> thing to kind of like nerd out. Geek out about. Yeah, you're it's like, the oh, best. this is cool. I want to do this. It's the best. And then they crash my drone into a tree. Well, that's that's part of the journey. That's Remember the journey and the destination? Yeah, the right, destination yeah. is the tree. If you could not journey, journey is... my drone into the tree <laughs> next time, I would appreciate it. What? Uh, um, I, I like ragging on Levi. Go well, ahead. It happens. Um... Do you, so what, you brought up this, this is interesting. You're talking about people wanting to work here. One of the most interesting things that is argued about on social media when we put up one of these videos, like we put up a video about Bob Lang saying, you know, the trades is a great place to work and there's guys making X amount of dollars and you're not working. You have kind of the old guard come in there like, that's horse crap. I work blank. And then you have this younger be like, no, he's right. Like it's this. And the, it's funny when I'm talking to guys that are under the age of say 40 or 35 that are in the trades that are either business owners or whatever. The number one thing I keep hearing about is quality of life. Yeah. Having time with your kids and your family and not working to where he was talking about somebody was working on like the world trade center, like after it went down and he was a tradesman that was basically like a engineer that had to come in and like do rebuilding and figure out like what, areas they could and he worked 60 80s hours a week and his son was like i would never be involved in that because i never saw you mm -hmm. and so he resented it and then his kids will probably resent it and then so anyway <clears throat> the interesting thing is i'm noticing that these topics are coming up either organically in the user generated section of the comments or in these videos where a lot of guys are like look I want to do the trades. There's a need for it. It's paying well. The technology, there's more need. We've talked about this. AI actually creates the need for more manual labor, ironically, versus, you know, how it replaced human workers in the past. But they keep coming back to this quality of life thing. And to me, it's like you said, it's like if you're going to do something, it's a good chunk of your life. And uh, they talked about Chris Scott. He talked about it with plumbing. He's like, I want to make sure that if I hire a guy and I train him like we're not here to use the best years of your life and then go, okay, cool. Do you have a younger brother? So we can go use him up too. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want there to be an impact. So I think what's changed and you tell me if I'm wrong and you you're at more trade shows than I am talking to people that are in the space. I think a big deal is exactly what you said to our new hires. It's like, I want you to enjoy working here. This is a job, but like for you to have any longevity in this, you're not just going to go bang your head against the wall and go, well, I paid the rent. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you because you can burn people out. People do have a lot of opportunities. I mean, we're getting richer. Now, it doesn't seem like it sometimes. There's a whole bunch of, you know, things are getting screwed Who's up. Who's getting richer? Am I well, getting richer? Well, personally, I am. <laughs> uh, you're allegedly getting paid, but I mean, you know, I'm... I haven't... I, so, you know, Milton in office space. Like, I stopped getting a paycheck like six <laughs> weeks ago. Who do yeah. I talk to about this? <laughs> uh, the... No, but, like, mm. people did. Like, yeah. people... I don't know. This stuff ebbs and flows. Like they talk about generations mm -hmm. and, you know, there's these theories of like the fourth turning every fourth generation. There's some oh. world calamity. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about these to put a lot of stock into them. But what, re what does sound seem true to me is that like, like depending, 
you see someone doing something like mm -hmm. your parents yep. working incredibly hard, you know, or something or the opposite, like the, and it means something to you, you know, mm -hmm. different people still have different values, but I do see people more and more thinking like I'm, I'm not like trying to bust this out at this one company till retirement and then I'll yep. have X amount of money and then I can move to Florida and that, you know what I mean? Like, yes, there's like a lot more of this, like, no, I want to like try to live my mm. life through this period of time. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, and it's sort of double edged sword because like, you know, the harder you work, probably the more you'll like quote unquote succeed. Let's say at least in maybe making money or something, Sure, you know, and there is, I, I do think, there's a, okay. I don't know what the word is lazy, but kind of like a get it while you can. Well, but let me formulate your point. Cause yeah. I, you and I are on the same page. I have this exact same theory. I, I take my aunt and my mom mm -hmm. and some people in my family, they like rose the corporate ladder, seventies and eighties. Like we are going to get it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Working, 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 high stress, high paying jobs, high stress, like all the time Very till, demanding. till you get to a point where you're like, because I think as children, they're like, you do this, this, and this until you're 65 or 70. And then you get to go look out at the water. I think the difference is there are a lot of people saying, I don't really want to use the best years of my life so I can look out at the water for my five, six, 10, 20 remaining years. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have that perspective. Hey, it's like, I don't know if I want to retire. I think I may want to just keep on going because I don't want to sit in a chair with a blanket over my life. That's Hank's demo. Have you talked to Hank? Yeah. You, get, you should get Hank on here one of these days. We should. But, uh, you know, he's like, I just really like working. And he li yep. likes his family a lot. Yep. Dude's got a lot going on in, in this very intentional, you know, with stuff. But he's like, I just, I don't see myself retiring because I really like doing this and it feels valuable and useful. And I get to work with, yeah. you know, geniuses like you, like, uh, did That's he, what say he said. That? He said, you uh, know, um, I mean, it was, didn't say it was like, it was implicit. Let's just oh, say. Was he drinking or? <laughs> 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 Get into my office. That bottle of whiskey from when we fundraised is just like gone. It's just like dripping you off, are looking, off of Hank's cheek. You're a genius. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's very funny visual. Oh. No, but the, that idea that like, that you can, and Hank is big on this. You can live in this balance of like yes. work, family, yep. like a life experience. Yes. And, you know, you're going to ebb and flow a little bit this way or that way. But like you actually can do that and it can all be enjoyable and kind of like it can all be additive, like to contribute to who you are and what your like life is. And he talks about like circles and whatever. He's got shapes. Um, he's got shapes. But, you know, the trades, it's hard because like working as a laborer yeah. is just hard work. Yeah, it is. Right. And it's, it's also something that yes, you get like better as you get older, but you also get like worse because you, you have like less energy, you know, at 50, you're just not like if you and an 18 year old are trying to compete at tearing off a roof or something like that. Now what you get wiser, you get more knowledgeable, yep. you can move into management, you can start your own thing. I mean, there's a relatively low threshold here. And I think the trades, are going to kill over the next oh. 10 to 20 years yeah. because there's so much, it, it's not just, like just AI, but tech, but it's like, there's so much work that machines are able to do when it comes to computers and bits mm -hmm. and information mm -hmm. and whatever that we're just like so far away from like a robot doing even a thing like driving a car, which is complicated, mm -hmm. but it's like a game with simple rules. Sure. You know, there's signs and you go or you stop and or whatever. And, and yep. like, that is hard enough, like dang near impossible for a machine to get right. Now it's getting there to where it's like getting quite good. But you then you imagine all the variables in trying to like fix someone's like water heater, you know? Oh, and I it's know. just like, yeah. and it's not that I could never see a machine doing that, but it's like, uh, Oh no, there's boxes in my way in the room. Can I move these boxes or am I just a machine with a <laughs> screwdriver on the end? You know what I mean? Like it's like, well, it's like the one electrician goes, we took a class and they go in the modern home, the modern home will have 25 that he goes, this was 10 years ago. Modern home will have 25 different IP addresses. He goes, and at the time we're like 25. Oh my God. He goes, most houses have 80 to 90 IP addresses going on at one time. He goes, but ironically, 
That creates the need for more of us to go in there because they're all on different technologies. Everybody's using a different functionality. Some actually don't like to talk well with each other. So then someone's got to go in and figure that out. He goes, we're so far away from someone being able to come and diagnose all that. And that's just an electrician in yeah, the modern home. It, so I think those jobs are going to do really well. Yeah. Like I just like all sorts of... Um, like these sort of dynamic problem solving need human labor jobs yep. going to do well. Yep. I also think there's going to be classes of new jobs. Like this is, this is my eternal gripe about human beings, myself included. But once you're aware of it, you can do better, mm -hmm. which is we have a failure of imagination. Mm. We, it's easy to see like the cost of something or even the first kind of first order opportunities of something, mm -hmm. but we see something and it's like, Oh no, self-driving cars. Like what are all these truckers going to do? You know, type of oh, a thing. Looking at like, the problem before. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, there's always, there is this like dislocation, like this, like all, it doesn't fit right now. But like the reason we get to have all these problems is because we're not all farming. We were all farming. Then we invented tractors. And that cut X, 80% of farming jobs, bam, gone, when yep. you can have a tractor till the field. Yep. And if that's all you're looking at, oh, it's gonna cost these jobs, what are we? It's like, you're, you're, see, you're, you're, you're so short-sighted, you're seeing what's right in front of your face mm -hmm. and not realizing, okay, if we don't have to waste our productive energy dragging hose through the ground so that we can plant potatoes, mm -hmm. then we can turn it towards other things and the story is that there are always other things because we just need people. We have people that shop for our groceries now. We have people that pick up food. Like there's all these like levels of service and layers of mm -hmm. things. And like mm -hmm. the one thing that the robot can't be is a person. Right. <laughs> like right. it actually. And so I, I like, yeah, I, I don't worry too much about that. I do. I see the opportunity in the trades and it's like the skills are not that hard to learn. You mm -hmm. can go get trained on them working somewhere. You can go to a vocational school. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually you can just like get a job. Like now we do have this overregulated BS license, corrupt economy where you have to have a license to like cut people's <laughs> hair or do anything. Yeah. So every now and then you have to go get a government <laughs> approval slip. If it please the crown, may I use a hair trimmer? It's like, yeah, okay. I guess we'll allow you to do that. Uh, I the love point it. is most of it, you can just learn. You can just go get a job somewhere and you can learn. And if you can, if you can be in charge of yourself enough that you can be disciplined, you can show up, you can do this, like you can run a business, mm -hmm. like, you know, you can start one. And now the thing is you may not want to, as we were going to earlier, like there's a lot of benefits to just being an employee. You're trading away a lot of risk. I'm just going to get my paycheck. I mm -hmm. get my paycheck every two weeks, yep. whether this business is doing great or whether it's suffering, I'm getting a paycheck. Yep. I can go home usually and stop thinking about it. Like, yep. and I'm just, and that's, it's just like what, what that's you value, a huge, what see, you now, want. That's a huge deal because I don't think uh, there's a lot of people I've known in my life that have been able to work a lot of jobs where they've always been able to go home and not think about it. Mm -hmm. Up until company cam, every job I had, I went home and thought about it. Yeah. And so I, it's interesting when you have different perspectives, but you and I've talked about that now in a couple different episodes and we've never really like stayed there, but that is true. That's another huge component to all this is like seeing opportunity is also bringing in potential risk to upsetting the apple cart of, man, I just need to pay for my kids braces right now. I, I can't really afford to get crazy over here and do this. But when a collection of people all take on that, mm -hmm. then there is no, it's like, no, I'm just going to keep going. That and I don't know the answer to it. And I don't think I figured it out how you get people to be more risk taking opportunistic because we all have to keep the lights on. But a lot of there's personality. Then there's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Because I, I it's Jason Wilmot, mm -hmm. who, you know, who yes. does digital ads for us and and for other one people. of my favorite people. He's a good dude. Um, his brother got like some Ph.D. in like leadership development, psychology. I don't know. It was some nonsense you know but uh, <laughs> nonsense. uh he said to jason who's told me one time he's like oh yeah luke has like the perfect I, that that's probably strong 
something about the right personality to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. which is like, yeah, kind of like outgoing. Yep. Um, and they, there was a couple other things that he said that were like, and my point being, there's these parts of it. There's like, um, just how are you normally? Mm-hmm. What situation are mm-hmm. you in? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you're desperate, like there's this whole weird catch 22 about like the environment, for example, mm-hmm. like the richer that you are, um, as a country, as a place, like the more safe you are from the environment, the more safe you are from a hurricane, a mm. tornado, mm-hmm. the heat, the cold, the everything. Yep. Like, like 90, like climate related deaths are down 98% over the last hundred years. Mm-hmm. Like, because people used to die a lot in sure. hurricanes, floods, cold, heat, just Absolutely. things that in, in, in modern technology, like n- helps that. Um, um, and I was making a point here and now I've went sideways and forgot what it was. Gosh, dang it. What was I talking about, man? Jason Wilmot's brother. Oh, PhD. oh, so th- sorry that you're like that your disposition, your situation, oh, yeah. when you're desperate, you really can't yes. kind of like afford to spend Good word. money, time yep. and, and risk. Like you just don't have the risk. Yep. And yep. so there's that. Then there's. Well, you know what else it Values. is? Values. What do you want out of this life? I was going to like, say, is, and the other thing is, it's it goes back to our conversation about a one, a two, a five, and a six. Yeah. Not everyone is meant to be a CEO for the reason that it's a personality thing. It's a want to thing. It's what are my values? It's what do I like to do? And you can't have a company where everybody wants to be a CEO. That doesn't Correct. work. And you can't run a company unless there's a bunch of nines and really good nines. Oh, man. Because again, if you don't have all these components, then you don't have an organization. You just have a bunch of chefs in a kitchen and no one to serve any food yeah, I mean, and no one to clean that's anything. That's like the and, whole yeah. diversity of a team. Yes. Like when you, the word diversity now it's become sort of very like political, very specific to like yeah. these certain kind yes. of categories of diversity. But like generally speaking, we're all, every individual person is like literally unique. Yep. Even if you're an identical twin, you have you're still you're, you're actually you know the way that your genetics express themselves blah, blah blah not that important the point is everyone's different everyone's yep. got different history perspective a little bit different values and can bring a different element to a team that can be valuable now mm-hmm. it's not that you could just pluck any person out and they're going to have some key thing that you need on your team like right. you need to find it f- people f- fit things together but that yeah, I mean, I can't write code, right. yet we sell an app. You know, right. that's what a company is, right. is like, is collecting up all these people. And I, that, that whole kind of like figuring out what you're about, what you want versus what you think you should want or what you want because other people wanted it for you or because mm-hmm. the girl that you liked wanted it or you know what I mean? Or you, it, it is, it's separating out, like there's this whole, you know, Peter Thiel or whatever is big on that. Rene Girard mim- mimetic theory. And I'm, I know extraordinarily little about this other than th- there's this sort of basic idea is that like what we, we have an incredibly hard time even deciding what we want and what we want is overwhelmingly mediated by the people around us, the culture yep. around us. And yep. that like, and it doesn't even mean we don't actually want this stuff, but if we can get down to like why we want it and what that like, mm-hmm. that we're not that thoughtful about it. And if you can get there, like we all know these people who are like just wiser than they have any right to be, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, someone who's like five years younger than you and you're like, man, Oh yeah. It just like feels like things are easy for them. And half the time it's just because they're just, they're just clearer on what they actually want and care about. Mm-hmm. And they're not like waffling around and like, uh, this, this, mm-hmm. this, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that, I it's mean, so, I, it's so, I still think I'm it's so in shaped the ballpark, but I'm not there. No, it's so shaped by your environment. And I always say it's shaped by your childhood. It's the same reason we always talk about having a trade shortage. And we'll finish up with this today. We talked about having a trade shortage. Yeah, yeah. And I interviewed Ashley Smith from Always Forward Roofing. And she's our age, you know, so on the elder millennial she's side. old, yeah. Old. Yeah, she's old, Ashley. Oh, Sorry how old you are. She's old. But she was like, you know, it's so funny. The whole thing they told millennials 
you know, especially in the 80s, because in the 80s, everything was like, you know, Japan is ahead of us in technology. China, mm-hmm. China's ahead of us in technology. Everybody needs to get into school, get to college, get on computers. Like, that's OK, blah, 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 which at the time, look, I'm not blaming anybody at that time. You're working off the information you have available. Mm-hmm. But you had all these kids go to college. And now what you are seeing in 2023 is you have a surplus of people with college degrees that worked in technology jobs that could easily be replaced by AI. And you have a shortage in manual labor, which there has never been a greater need for in this country in terms of infrastructure and everything else and she goes isn't it funny that it was our generation that kind of has ruined the the trades in terms of just having enough labor and i was like it's all goes back to what you're told as a kid and that shapes your ideology Mm -hmm. meaning like it's the same going back to our conversation because i was that way it's like i felt like my parents were entrepreneurs and they were the boss and my mom ran the company and she was the ceo and so that's what i got to do so i got to go to college and i got to make sure i do this this is and every step of the way i felt this twinge of like that's not what i want to do but mm-hmm. i think i have to do because that means success and then i'm comfortable and no one's worrying about money and you go and you go and you go and you go and then you finally get there and you get to a certain point and something in your life happens where it wakes you up and some of us are not lucky enough to get there but it did for me and it was like oh my god I don't want to do this. I don't think I'm not going to be a good dad. I'm not going to be a good anything. I'm really actually not fulfilling anything I want to do. But I was always told if you want to be successful, this is what you do. And what was that? That was all done around my climate and where I grew up and who I talked to yeah, and yeah. who I thought. The, cult- Absolutely. You, the culture around you. Yes. And so to your point, it, it is so true that here we are. And it's so funny that it has such to do with the trades. It's like there was a lot of us that felt that way. Dude, don't do, a, don't be a plumber. You know, don't do this. I, I do think the market. Someone makes this case. Who is it? I think it's that. Uh, 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 one of the Weinstein, not Brett Weinstein, the other one. Oh. Uh, um. Mm, whatever. We'll. F- hey, sorry, I know. we'll find your name later. But we, I, we know who you we are. Will. We can all picture you. Yeah. I um, see you. Yeah, yeah. We see you in our minds. <laughs> um, no, but Weinstein. So he talks about this in the sciences, but I think this is true in the trades too, too is that like there these are like manual sort of jobs, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And But what we've done, you see this, I mean, in, in all sorts of construction, kitchen jobs, whatever, is that like they're overwhelmingly done by immigrants. Like there's tons of immigration that comes in. And when you're an, uh, an immigrant and you don't often, you're not fluent in the language mm-hmm. yep. you're th- there's, there's, so you end up doing these jobs and you're willing to do them for lower pay mm-hmm. than maybe the market would be if there wasn't this huge supply of, sure. of, of immigration from labor. And I wonder about that, like driving down the wages of these areas oh, yeah. such that then it's like go to college versus like we almost like it could be a little bit reversing right now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. to where, okay, actually there's all these jobs and more that need to get done yep. where the quote unquote sort of immigration or just from like an economic perspective, let's just say the labor undercutting the price of labor. Yep. which is just how you would view that economically could be happening in other areas, like in sure. technology, in these other areas sure. to where, sure. Oh, all of a sudden now the cost of like labor is going to go way up in, in the construction trades such that these become good, hard jobs because they're the ones that are just at the t- at like the kind of fine skilled work, especially fundamentally irreplaceable Mm -hmm. by machines Mm -hmm. and like if it remains that way then i could see brian marine having a huge probably (laughs) career ahead of him in the trades i think he does in the trades masonry Um, uh okay actually i lied we are going to finish up with this we we're going to approach a billion zero to a billion photos company cam has done xyz since 2016 what does 1 billion to 2 billion photos look like for company cam? Whew. What happens in the next X amount of years? Predict the future. We're going to go back and review your answers here yeah, in that's 2030. Crazy. I wonder, I and mean, see if you're right. If you're like, wrong, I w- you I, lose I, a limb. I, I mean, I'm just kidding. We're <laughs> just the guy from Monty Python, like rolling around this couch, yelling at you, coward. Uh, what a great movie. You know, we hit, it, it took us, let's, eight, let's say, eight years, basically, yeah. to hit a billion photos. Or is it eight? Under eight? Just under? Well, I don't know what year. Yeah, no, what 2015. 20, 2015. 
I mean, what we say we launched in July of 2015, so almost eight okay. years exactly to hit a billion photos. I wouldn't, I would not be surprised if we hit two billion in like two or three years. Wow! Like, like I yeah. mean, it could be two years, sure. and like we could hit five billion, you know, like in the next five years. Because it's crazy. It just it's cumulative. Yep. It just keeps adding up, and that, yeah, it it. It blows me away. It's crazy because these numbers, billion, they, they're meaningful. Just bumping into someone, like I went to this this yes. like golf thing the other day, and like two different contractors came up to me. And they're like, oh, you're a company cam guy. We lo- we use company cam. Well, you know, we love it. And, and just being like, that's so much more cool than a big number. Dude. Is that like random real world people text me, oh, I just had someone come over to my house and... Uh, they were like showing me pictures in this app. I realized it was company cam. You know, like someone I know from across. Dude, the it happened it's to like me. At a, it happened to stuff. me at a gas station this morning. So I have this shirt on. Guy held the door open for me. He had a tool belt on. I don't know what he did. And uh, I go, oh, thank you. And he goes, yeah, love company cam. And then walked the other direction. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. I, it's, I love it. I think that is the coolest thing in the world. So yeah, that's cool. Those. That is how I feel the scale a lot more than like this number of a billion photos yep. is that like I can go almost any city in this country, let's say, and bump into a contractor of some variety. And so cool. there's like a half chance, you know, it's not everyone. Yeah. Half of them. You, there's, we have so many users yeah. that it's impossible not to meet someone who's <laughs> yeah. a fan of my work. No, I get it. <laughs> the man who brings me my caviar. <laughs> Use this company cam. Without company cam, I wouldn't have this caviar. <laughs> As you can see, it's a very important app. Uh, um, no, that's cool. What I mean, there's so to me, it's impossible to tell the future of what happens to the next billion because technology could change in a heartbeat. Yeah. But yeah, sky's the under limit. three years. I that's my it. call. I'm We're gonna right end now. this podcast. It's been lovely sitting on a couch with you. But, um, Is it a love seat yet? No, okay, that's <laughs> okay. it. And we're done. You said it was lovely. <laughs>